We appreciate all of the guests who have appeared on our show and sincerely thank them for providing you, our audience, with useful information. However, the advice our guests provide is theirs, and we encourage you to seek out a professional if you have specific questions about any topic we cover on the Crushing Debt Podcast. On this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast, organize your money. Welcome to the Crushing Debt Podcast with your host, Florida attorney Sean Yesner, where our goal is to help you get rid of the financial bullies in your life. So welcome back to this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast. My name is Sean Yesner, owner and founder of Yesner Law, and welcome back live, in person, in office. In office. Your, I was going to say studio, but whatever. <laughs> uh, your your financial coach, George Curbelo. Welcome, George. Happy, happy, happy. I hope everybody's doing well. I'm doing well, my friend, and uh, ready for another week. Another week, another weekend, another craziness with the kids. Another day, another dollar. Hey, I have good news, though. My wife and I are building a house. Nice. We're getting a house. <laughs> nice. It's uh, and, and it's uh, here in Florida. Go figure. <laughs> <laughs> but we're very excited. We're very nervous. Uh, we're doing everything that's necessary. You know, budgets and saving. Now we're like locking down. Chris is like, no, we're not. No vacations. No nothing. We're just. This is this is the goal for the year. So we'll see how we'll see how well I do. I might break down and uh, need I, some drinks at once. Uh, once in a while on this journey. I see a future episode in the <laughs> works there. Ah, how well we did the uh, the leasing and buying that might. Uh, turn into uh, the housing thing. I was thinking more what not to do when... <laughs> how, you how mean to save, all my lessons? How to save your marriage <laughs> while you buying go. a new house. I like it. I like it. Yeah, we'll figure something out. So we do have a guest uh, to bring to you today. Before I get to the guest real quick, I want to talk about uh, Mark Purvis. He's one of our sponsors. Uh, those of you that have been listening for a while know that he edits the podcast, so he makes us all sound good. Uh, for our guest, he doesn't edit for content. He just takes out all the ums and the ahs and the spaces and, and that kind of stuff. So he's not going to not gonna change any of the content from the original recording to what you all are hearing right now as a listener. But one way that we support Mark is he's got a website called LegacySpotlight.com. And so if you want to preserve or share stories of future generations to uh, new generations, contact Mark at his website and he'll help you record those stories. He'll do it in a way that's fun. He's an award-winning videographer uh, with over 20 years of experience. So again, Legacy Spotlight dot com. And thank you, Mark, for being our, our editor since day one of the show. Uh, but I am excited to get to our guest this week. So our guest this week was actually sent to us by Clifton Corbin, a previous guest uh, of ours that uh, I had a great time talking yeah, to Clifton. Great conversation. So um, I'm looking forward to talking to Tamika as well. So she is a financial educator who teaches busy and easily distracted black women how to align their money with their values through one-to-one -one coaching and educational content on her various social media platforms, which I'll give you here in a minute as well. Tamika's primary focus is budgeting, saving, and debt management for those overwhelmed by their finances and unsure where to start. She knows the feeling firsthand as a black woman living with ADHD. She created Organize Your Money as a safe space to ask questions and not feel alone on your financial organization journey. She is a certified educational instructor, a candidate for an accredited financial counselor. She also holds a bachelor's degree in finance and spent her early career working as a corporate tax analyst. Welcome, Tamika Howell. Hi. Thank you for having me on the show. Yes. How are you doing? Good. That was a good intro. <laughs> so, I, I made it up on the she, spot. She approves. <laughs> so I, I got to ask, a corporate tax analyst and a, a bachelor's degree in finance, where'd you get your bachelor's degree from? Rutgers. Oh, nice. Yes. It was in finance and then you transitioned. So you're not a not a CPA, just a, a, a tax, which is okay, because I'm not a CPA either. I'm <laughs> no, no I, no, I transitioned. So I was total like with my internship and full time, like five years working at, in tax. And um, then I pivoted into um, information systems. So I got my master's in information systems and I've worked as a quality assurance analyst slash business analyst for over a decade now. Wow. And then that's transitioned into uh, Organize Your Money. So the, the website is organizeyourmoney.net. I'll put the link in the notes. 
And you can connect with Tamika either by email, tamika at organizeyourmoney.net. You can find her on LinkedIn under Tamika Howell, Tamika Dash Howell. And you can find her on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, and Twitter, all under Organize Your Money. So we definitely encourage you to connect with Tamika if you're a black woman, but even if you're not a black woman, reach out. <laughs> Tamika's really nice. I like Tamika. So I'm sure she's got a lot of very good stuff to teach anyone, although her niche is is working with, with women, with black women, and women with uh, ADHD. So, so I would say why, so again, what was your focus uh, in regards to ADHD? Because that, that obviously is, we don't realize that's a, that seems to be a common problem with, with a lot of focus. I mean, we think about it as like, oh, is it focus? Is it memory? Is it this? So what's, what's your story uh, regarding ADHD and, and why, why the focus there? Okay, so focus there is, I, I realized I had a bunch of separate well, I, I thought they were separate until, you know, like coming to the realization that, you know, it could be ADHD is from a child that was like homework, like missing homework assignments or turning them in late. And I used to also frequently forget my keys. <laughs> so I found myself uh, locked out several times, things like that. And just also like kind of like being in my head. So I have like the inattentive presentation so you know there's times where you kind of like zone out or daydream things like that Mm -hmm. and kind of like missing parts of conversation so like hearing the first part and then the end and they're like oh my gosh (laughs) (laughs) you know just things like that and getting into adulthood and you know struggling in college as far as like retaking classes and things like that like just not figuring out why I couldn't like get through like statistical methods because right. <laughs> I was like I took a couple of times and was just like this is, <laughs> this is strange you know just getting through college it was it was a pretty big struggle for me and then like with money just having I just didn't have a good handle on my finances right from the time I started to work even in high school it's just like I just I just needed to be spent <laughs> right. oh my god like, I just didn't understand you know, what I could do with my money and to set myself up for the future. So um, there was a lot of that, took on a lot of student debt. And and even with like retaking classes and both my undergraduate and graduate programs, it's like you're spending extra money and I'm using debt to finance it. Mm-hmm. So it's like the debt is just like ballooning. So, you know, graduating, you know, having a six figure debt after both my degrees and kind of just like on this constant hunt to like better myself in ways, but not finding ways that worked for me. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So that was kind of like a pattern. So it was like, it was in the money, it was in schoolwork and also like in my work life, taking longer to do things. Although like with tax season, like those can be very long, but it's like to add on, not knowing then what was age, just taking longer to do things. It's just, you know, just made the work day even longer. One of my questions is what's your process in other words how do you counter the adhd so that you do create your budget so that you do pay the bills so that you do focus on getting your Mm -hmm. tax returns done what what's the process that you use to i don't know if overcomes the right word but but yeah but so so what i've done to to work with my ADHD, so to speak, is I now know that I have to take my larger goals and I have to break them down. Like that's the main thing. Um, Cause I would just get overwhelmed with larger goals and not really, you know, sit down and make a plan to execute through to the completion of the goal. So now I work backwards from the larger goal and break it down into, you know, what are the milestones for this goal? And then the steps, like the next steps to, to get there. So I would say that's like the high level process that I do. And I also make sure like, you know, I include my husband as well so that we both know where we're going. Cause I find that working with someone that also knows that, you know, you have these goals and that you're working towards them is helpful in the journey. So that you kind of think kind of help to keep you on track or keep you accountable to reaching those goals. I think you hit on one of the like the the pitfalls, financial pitfalls when we talk about, you know, ADHD and when you have them. What are other common? Because I think 
impulse spending seems to be one that that Mm -hmm. seems to be common as well. Yeah. Um, What are some other, you know, I would say signs, but what are some of the other pitfalls when it comes to money? And, you know, when you're, I guess, self, because we do a lot of self-diagnosing, right? (laughs) But if you're diagnosed with ADHD itself, what are some of the other common pitfalls that have when you, you know, when you talk about money and, and finances? Yeah. So like you mentioned, there's the impulse spending. So one of the things that I suggest with impulse spending is that it's going to happen. And instead of trying to avoid it or ignore it is to kind of like give yourself a little bit of a cushion or some kind of line item in your budget to accommodate any impulse spending that may occur. So that, you know, you're not like just left impacted thinking, oh, no, I didn't hit another goal again. You kind of had that worked in there. So there's not as much impact to your budget or your goal. I mean, that's one one of the topics itself that seem to be prevalent when it comes to like just spending, impulse spending itself. Is there is there a way or uh, tips? Because you have mentioned simplifying your budget. How is that helpful in that in that area as well? The other thing is, if you <clears throat> if you have a good idea of like your income and when everything's going out there in the month, I think automation is like one of the is a, a, another mm-hmm. good way of managing your finances. It just depends on how you want to do it because there's like the multiple bank account method. If you don't want to do that granular checking of everything, is to separate your accounts so that you don't have everything coming out of one account. So you have your bills just come out of one and then you're spending out of one and then you have a separate for your savings and different goals like that. So you don't have everything in one pot. You know, that's another way to mitigate some of the spending issues. Another one is like to use cash because that kind of it operates like a pay in center in the brain. So it's like you're less likely to part with cash than you are to swipe a card. So that's another like helpful tip. Like if you, you know, if you're out shopping, I know it's, it's not as helpful with online shopping, but they'll go to the store and shop, like, you know, try to use cash, you know, when you're starting out on your journey so that you can kind of like, you know, get a better handle on your, on your money. I like that. I I didn't even think of those things, but it it makes sense that if you're, if you're struggling with ADHD or even if, maybe you haven't been officially diagnosed, but you got symptoms to do some of these things to automate your payments, to separate out the bank accounts. You also have a free guide that people can get on your website. Anyone can get on your website, eight tips to organize your money. And Mm -hmm. uh, if I remember right, when I went onto the website, there was a free pop-up that popped up. Although there's also a link on the website to to get the free guide with a with an email, and it says D- define financial goals, build a spending plan aligned with your values, stay on track and motivated. Are these things that you've done? Are these tips that you've picked up? A little bit of both along the way. Yeah. So it's 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 a little bit of both. So it's some of the things that I've done, and also things I wish that I knew that would have been helpful. <laughs> Well, I wish I knew I had ADHD, but, you know, I was late diagnosed, but, you know, I'm just glad that I know now and kind of know what I need to be successful um, with. Out of curiosity, what is the process for, and I don't necessarily want to get too, too personal unless you want to, it's totally up to you, but is it, you know, prescription? Is it speaking with a counselor? In other words, if I think I might have ADHD, what should I do? And then if I got diagnosed with ADHD, is it something where a doctor is going to say, take these prescriptions or talk to this counselor? How, how do you bring it in and, and assimilate it into your, into your life? Not, I mean, if you want to talk about you specifically, but also yeah. just generally. I mean, like it's, it's a process and I think it just depends on your situation. But I think the best is to start with a mental health care professional just to talk through it or your, your general practitioner, but not all doctors will treat that. Like I know my primary doctor, she said that I need to speak with a psychiatrist. So my, um, my therapist, she gave me a referral to a psychiatrist, a psychiatrist office that they work with. So that's what she did. Cause my, my mental health professional told me to talk to my doctor about it. I mean, she's able to diagnose, but anything else beyond, you know, and like CBT and do different things, but they can't do medication. So um, they did refer me to psych- a psychiatric practice. 
There's also this conflict between, I think some older generations may say, all you got to do is, you know, focus. You, you know, they, yeah. they don't get right. that ADHD is a real thing. At the same time, I think there is some kernel of truth to it may end up being overdiagnosed. You know, mm-hmm. it may be where, you know, you just need to give your kid a spanking every once in a while. <laughs> a little discipline. <laughs> a little, a, little, a little discipline. This guy with the old man here, right? Here. <laughs> but, you know, I, I don't mean to say that to take away from anybody who is legitimately dealing with ADHD, but I think there's that separation of there are people that legitimately have ADHD and, mm-hmm. and to have people like you and to have resources that you have to help deal with, okay, I've got ADHD and now I need to focus on my money, but there's also the conflict of, okay, sometimes you just need to be more disciplined. Right. Well, I'll, I'll give you a story as well. Like my my daughter, she she was diagnosed with ADHD probably about a year ago. But it's funny, Tamika, you have mentioned, you know, early stages of homework, late, you know, not staying on top of things. And we just thought like, my goodness, she doesn't have good study habits in my daughter. And we started to realize it's like, okay, is, is there something more to this? Yeah. And we we said, let's at least investigate the situation. Because we're, we're one of those where it's not like, throw drugs at everything. We, but we wanted to get her help because it was impacting her confidence. It was impacting her ability to to do well in school. So once we got her the support and the help, the you know, the conversations on how to deal with it, even us as parents, we realized we have to talk to her a little differently. We have to handle this. You know, she doesn't learn the same that my oldest does. My, my oldest was a book, you know, bookworm. She knows how to, you know, there was, there was all those kind of things. My youngest was just different. So we, it, yeah. it, it taught us to kind of like, okay, we, we can't just talk about money with my youngest the same way we do with my oldest, even though both of them love spending it. So that's maybe that's a different <laughs> problem <laughs> we have too. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I I've heard that. And it's, you don't know, like you, you, you just have to evaluate people. I think right. each person is different, but you'll know based on the patterns. Like if it, if it's not changed, like if, if something can be changed by say like a structural change right. and it works, then maybe that's not, maybe that's a, a, a case of structure. But I would say if you implement something and it's still not work, like it's not working how it should, then maybe that's something else. It may not be ADHD. Um, there could be various conditions that affect your executive function. It's not just ADHD, but, and those, you know, organizational skills and stuff like that. But, you know, it's important to, I think, at least explore if it's something that's significant, significantly impairing your life, where that's like a realization I came to. And this was like after like my daughter was born. And like I was like, something. I was like, right. <laughs> like this is, you know, this might be something else outside of, you know, because I, I was originally like diagnosed like with depression. But like once, you know, it got beyond, you know, just the normal depression and on top of that, the postpartum because like outside of your period and like right. you know, this there might be something else to explore. Um I didn't know it like exactly at that time, but you know, after working with my therapist and it's weird, I I was listening to a podcast and you know, there was a couple of women that had like similar academic struggles to me and you know, just different things even in that career. And I was like, maybe I should ask my, my therapist about this. And, <laughs> you know, we, you know, it's kind of like, you do go through these patterns of like, you know, it's like, I start things, I stop it. Like, what, what is going on? And why have I been doing that, like, my whole life? <laughs> you know, not that I'm not able to achieve things, but it's just like the struggle, like the, you know, the like more amount of effort that it took right. to complete these things. It's yep. just like, it's everyone else operating like that or is it just me i do exhibit some adhd qualities some adhd symptoms from time to time i've never gone to the doctor about it i've never asked a doctor i've never been diagnosed with it but even listening to you in terms of some of the things you're going through yeah i mean i lose focus 
from time to time. I got a set of keys, so I'm, I'm part of a, I don't know if you know about uh, Tampa and all of our, our Gasparilla crews and, and the pirate invasion. It's all part of, it's all the kind of the beginning of Mardi Gras and all that kind of stuff. And so we literally, Gasparilla is the third largest parade in the U.S. Wow. You got Rose Bowl, you got Macy's, and then you got Gasparilla, the three largest parades in the U.S. Well, we uh, have these, you know, really decked out, complicated floats. And where the heck is Sean going with this story? <laughs> there he goes again. <laughs> I, my responsibility within our crew is I got to get the float ready for all the parades. And so we have to lock it up where it is in storage. And so I have the keys to get on and off the float. And I accidentally locked them on the float one Ooh, day. Okay. I know that if I'm going somewhere, I got to have those keys around my neck. Uh, you know, the, the front door to my office has an automatic lock on it. And so I either don't, or if I lock it, I lock the deadbolt because I don't want to accidentally lock myself out of my office or I always have my keys on me. And so I've got to do those types of things. I've got to have those kinds of systems in place as well in order to, to just make sure that I don't mess myself up. Right. Yeah. And I know like when like me and my husband moved to our first house a couple of years ago, I was like, I'm going to get one of those key hooks <laughs> it's like, so that I can leave it somewhere and I know <laughs> It's in the it's same place right. every time. You always know if it's not there, it's, it's lost. It's always in the same place every time, and that's where I know where to go. So I'm very much a book, a write it down, manually keep lists. Yeah. Are you like writing down lists? Are you looking at it on the computer? Is there a database that you? How do you manage all of your information? I use Google Sheets just to keep right. track that's of right. what was actual and what was spent. I used apps. So I used, you need a budget up until the end of last year, but now I'm using something called Monarch Money. And that's been really helpful for me because before I had, you need a budget, personal capital. And it, it was, so I would have to use those two different things. But Monarch Money, I was able to also track my net worth and do my budget as well inside of that too. So that's been pretty helpful. But you know, I still I still like to keep my my spreadsheet, <laughs> but um, and it's, a, it's just a, a very simple thing. But that's what I do for money. But as far as my day to day, I use to do is it's a combination of to do is and writing things down because I feel like the more it's written down, the less likely it gets lost. <laughs> so, you know, it's like I have a <laughs> I have a, a a bit of a way, and I have my like weekly planner, you know, where I try to have like an outlook for the week. And then I use Notion as like my brain database, so to speak. So like just like ideas, I just kind of just shove that in there. So. Yeah, I found that to be helpful. I carry a notebook around as well, where if I get a random idea, I have some place I can write it down because even I'll forget it. If I don't write it down, I'll forget it too. Yeah. So I, I'm a big fan of, of carrying around stuff to write down on when you when you feel it hit you. Well, I converted to the digital notebook so that I can yeah. kind of, because yeah. uh, I started realizing, uh, I started losing papers. <laughs> it's like, yeah. oh, I wrote it down, but like, where did I put the paper now? <laughs> yeah, I, I carry, I like around, I carry like. around two bags. I carry around one bag that has my laptop in it, and I carry around another bag that has all of my stupid lists and whatnot and papers and all that. It's not stupid. It's I, it's very nice. I have not converted to digital yet. <laughs> right, we'll get you there. We'll get you there. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> so... I don't know, anything else that you wanted to talk about or mention? I'll give out real quick. Again, your contact information is Tamika at OrganizeYourMoney.net. On LinkedIn, you're Tamika-Howell. Uh, Instagram, TikTok, Facebook, Twitter is all Organize Your Money. The eight tips to organize your money, which they can get on the website, OrganizeYourMoney.net. Anything else that we forgot or that you wanted to talk about? No, I think that's, that's pretty much it. I... Uh... Not sure what else I would add, but <laughs> <laughs> go to go to her website, get the free guide. Go to the website, that's get we'll the free say. guide. That's that's what we'll add. Absolutely. <laughs> so, uh, I do want to talk real quick. We've got another sponsor that we normally talk about is Sam Cohen. He owns Attorneys First Insurance. They write errors and omissions or malpractice coverage for attorneys and title companies all over the country. Uh, you can go to his website, which is attorneysfirst.com, or you can reach out to Sam directly. Sam at attorneysfirst.com. I mentioned the Organize Your Money TikTok. I would be remiss if I didn't mention the Curbelo Financial TikTok. I um, love it. I noticed that I, I didn't see that Tamika has a YouTube page. 
Although Yesner Law has a YouTube page, Yesner Law's YouTube page is as updated as Organize Your Money's YouTube page. <laughs> <laughs> Meaning it hasn't been updated in quite a while. <laughs> this guy's got jokes. <laughs> and then, of course, we've got our Patreon page, which uh, if you want to send us some help, if you want to uh, help send us. Send Sean some help, apparently. <laughs> apparently, send me some help. Lord, um, <laughs> you know, send us some help in terms of if you enjoy the show, if you want us to do more for the show. Uh, Patreon is a way to do that. We've also got some stuff on Patreon that you can't get from the free versions of, uh, you know, what you're listening to on on whatever podcast player you're listening to right now. Other than that, did I forget anything, George? No, I think I think uh, we're right on track, my friend, to end the show, but uh, I'm glad we survived. <laughs> thank you, Tamika, for your patience. Yes, thank you, Tamika. We appreciate you being a guest on the show. Thank you for having me. I guess that'll do it for this week's episode. Yep. And uh, uh, do you want to close it or do you want me to close it? I'll let you close it because I already I couldn't even start it again. I was like, what's the end? What's, what do we say? The end is we say that we hope you have more money at the end of the month rather than month at the end of the money. And that will put a bow finally on this week's episode <laughs> of the Crushing Debt Podcast. And we look forward to talking to you in next week's episode. If you have questions that you think would make a great topic for a future episode, please email Sean or connect with us on social media. Sean Yesner and Yesner Law PL are Florida licensed attorneys. The information contained in this week's episode is not a substitute for legal advice. Your situation may differ, especially if you are located somewhere other than the state of Florida. If you have questions, please contact our office or contact a local attorney. Thank you for listening to this week's episode of the Crushing Debt Podcast. Podcast.